What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up? Hello. Hello. What's up, people? Yo, yeah, yeah, listen to me. The website, it's hitthebit.com. You go there, and I know there's sometimes just me in the chat room because that's why what's happening is I'm siphoning off everybody to the underground lair that is the new Hit The Bit site. It's a uh, playground for us cool kids. It's a Facebook for traders, a place where you can make your own page, hang out with us all day, show us what you think you know, what you know. And again, it's not all about me right now. I'm not even talking about stocks anymore. It's all about sports gambling again. Yeah, that's right. I had to cave in because every once in a while, I mean, listen to me. I come correct. I never talk about uh, how awesome I am and how I never make mistakes in the stock market and in life. I try to express everything I can as best as possible in the five to ten minute videos that I do. And then we hang out in the chat room. But I hadn't paid a bookie. Uh, for three years, and that's a pretty good accomplishment, okay? So I kind of know what I'm doing, and I know when there's a situation where you got to just pounce on it. And I posted it on the underground lair that if you would have came to hitthebid.com, you knew what I was talking about. It was the Texans over the Seattle Seahawks, minus six was the lock of the century. Every once in a while, these bets come up, and you have to just go with it. What you do is... I like to compare sports gambling to the stock market. Now, when you're in a situation in the stock and there's no buyers and you're, you're short in this stock, it's hard to stay short. But when you know you've got a bad situation and you just want to ride out and you just want to just pound this company, you can't understand why they're even in business and the stock's going down and you're thinking about covering and you're figuring, ah, you know what, let's keep pounding it. And you know what, the thing keeps going down and down and down. And if you're long that stock, you're sitting there, oh, what's going on here? You're, not, you're blinded by the fact that you still own the stock, but you don't want to read the writing on the wall. With sports gambling and in football more in general, there's the bad teams. Then you have the teams that are playing for something. And then you have the teams that are just good and they're just rolling. So when you come up with a, t a team that has something to play for, like the Texans, there's a slight glimmer of hope that the Texans might make the playoff. And there's a team that could score. They're playing against a team that has nothing to play for. And you got to think about the emotions. If you're a professional football player, I know the other some players will put pride on the line, and they got to play because they're men and they're out to prove something, and these are professional ball players. But let me tell you, you've played ball, you've played on a softball team, bowling, whatever the hell you play. And you know you're getting your ass kicked, this, your heart's out of it. And of course you're not getting paid $8 million to play a game. But you know what? you got to think about the true emotion of sports. You know they're not in that game. And you know when you're going up against a team that has something to play for, they know that they're not going to be in the team, so they're going to step on their throats. Houston Texans minus six. Same thing with the Baltimore Ravens. Okay? Here we have a team that's holding on to their hope. A very prideful team with Ray Lewis involved. You knew they weren't going to mess around this week. You knew they were going to stomp some ass. And of course, if you looked at the Bolt, if you looked at the Colts, you also had a team that was striving for about seven different records, seven different NFL records that were right there for the taking. Especially because they still want to go undefeated. They're saying how they don't want to think about going undefeated because they're going to probably want to rest players. But we're talking about last week, so it was a three for three for three for three for day. And you could have made some money on that. And then if you checked on the website later in the evening, I told you I wasn't going to bet against the Giants because I wanted to root with my heart involved and not have any money on the line. So I also I went three for three. I didn't really want to push it and go four for four. So I told you if you were, if you were reading the website, you might want to put a little bit something to icing on the cake on the Philadelphia Eagles to beat the Giants. I mean, that was a good game. I'm glad I had no money on the game because I would have been an emotional wreck. But... We don't need to talk about stocks anymore. We all know where we're going. And irresponsible as it seems, with hyperinflation, with all the reasons for, we're not going to go, all the doomsdayers and all the reasons that we shouldn't be going up, doesn't matter. There's no reason to do financial reporting anymore. The bottom line is we're going higher and there's nothing you can do about it. We're going to Dow 20,000. That's right. 
And so if we go to 18.5, or let's say we go to 17,000 in uh, by December 2012, are you going to say I'm wrong? Are you going to be bitching and moaning that we're only in at 17.5? Oh, crawl, you suck. We only went up 85% since you tell you. I thought we were going to Dow 20,000. We're only at 18.5. You're going to complain? Just buy a mutual fund. Buy the Qs. Do what you got to do. Because the only way we're going down is Mothra attacks. <laughs> Fucking monsters start storming through, fucking knocking over buildings like Cloverfield and shit. Fucking aliens coming down and start stabbing people and injecting them with poison. And then those people turn into fucking zombies and start eating the other people. And then those people turn into other kind of zombies. Maybe then. Maybe then was. We'll, yeah, there seems to be some sort of zombieism down in Wall Street today. Uh, and, and analysts will come out, well, I embrace the zombies, for one. And if you look about it, look at their faces. They're going to need some facial cream. So you might want to buy some Procter & Gamble, actually. So we can turn this uh, dire situation of zombieism here running through the streets into a positive situation because the stock market only goes up, if you haven't heard. Mothra, fucking Godzilla, fucking Mecha Godzilla. some shit's going to have to happen. I don't want to say a bomb's going to have to go up because I don't even want to talk about that kind of stuff. But... You can't, you can't fight this market. Don't fight it anymore. Don't. We're not going down until the fucking, especially U.S. Steel. Come on now. Three weeks ago, I told you, here's my situation. I was bought some $40 calls. I made 100% on the options. And I said, this is one of those situations. I doubled my money, which in theory happened in about a week and a half. You knew what was going to happen. You knew it. I knew it. Yet I still sold out of it. There's nothing I could do. That's my that's my plight in life. Forty dollar calls at a dollar. Sorry, first we had them at eighty five cents, and then we bought more at a dollar and sold them all out at two. So that's that. And I told you to get involved in the U.S. deal because if you haven't caught on, people, the the, the gist of the whole program and the reason this whole thing got started is because I might know a little bit about what I'm doing, but Buying when I sell out of stock still is the bread and butter of the hit the bid system. Oh, you got a system? Oh, you got a system, do ya? Automated trading? What are you doing? I went to you meet my friend Felipe. Felipe Fibonacci is going to come on the show uh, soon. My friend Felipe Fibonacci is kind of pissed off because his name is Felipe Fibonacci. Everybody emails him about, you know, charting and stuff. He has nothing to do with the stock market. Felipe Fibonacci is coming over for Christmas, so we'll probably have a little sit down with him. But financial reporting, what are you going to say? Talk about charts? You're going to be talking about this, that, and the other thing? The jobless recovery, the recession is over, it's not over? Did you watch Meet the Press We're trying to debate whether or not we're going to have a jobless recovery? Nothing matters to the market right now because money is pouring in. Money on the sidelines. How many times are you going to hear that shit? Money on the sidelines. <laughs> yeah, the money on the sidelines hasn't even come in. Think about that. Wait till the money on the sidelines comes in. That's going to take us to Dow 20,000. Trust me. Trust me. And if you don't trust me, at least come to the website for my sports gambling picks. On fire. On fire I am. This is where the, the end of the year is when teams have something to play for. Other teams have nothing to play for. Oh, what about the spoiler? Sometimes teams want to get up. Fuck a spoiler. It's gambling. It's not everything's not guaranteed, but what is guaranteed is the market's going up. Nothing you can do about it. Nothing anybody can do about it. Buy stocks. Anything breaks out, don't think about that you missed a three dollar stock and now it's at twenty. If it's breaking twenty, it's going to twenty five. If it's breaking twenty five, it's going to thirty. If it's breaking eighty, it's going to hundred. Don't think about it. If it breaks hundred, it's going to one twenty. Those are the rules that I made a ton of money on in nineteen ninety nine, and they're back. This is nineteen ninety nine all over again, people. Oh, but then it's going to end badly. Who cares how it's going to end? The, the idea is making money on a daily basis, trying to do what you got to do. Don't think about where the stocks have come and all the money you could have made if you would have held on to the U.S. steel. I know. The stock was $34 just another day ago. Remember that? We thought we were running out of opportunities for the rest of the year. Oh, then we get a rhino that comes along. Then we get this heat that comes along. APWR comes along. FSLR breaking out. Come on, there's opportunities every single day. Don't be upset, fatty. Come to the chat room. Come back to the chat room. This guy's so disgruntled and so unhappy about a bull market. I've never seen, I've never seen this many people upset about a bull market. You know what that means? Is that a lot of people just feel like they've missed the opportunity of a lifetime. But you know what? 
it's still going on. There are stocks every single day that are just breaking out. You just got to find them. Come to the chat room. I'll help you out. I'll help you out. This heat's been treating me well. The rhino's been great. It has this nice move. Your day's over by. My day's over already. We had heat. Boom. Opened up. Flying. All right. Come to the chat room. Hit the bid.com. Oh, yeah.